The next level of eukaryotic gene expression regulation that we're going to talk about is transcriptional control. And remember that transcription is the conversion of DNA into RNA. So RNA is being made uh, complementary to the DNA in the gene. Now, this is arguably the most critical level of gene expression regulation in eukaryotes. And this level of control is controlled by these DNA binding proteins called transcription factors. So transcription factors are proteins that bind to the DNA and they bind to a special section on the DNA called the promoter section. And when they bind to this promoter section, they help the RNA polymerase bind to the DNA in order to start transcription. There's an additional protein called a transcription activator that is also required in order to help this process get started. and the transcription activator binds to a region of the DNA called an enhancer. Mediator proteins may help connect the enhancer section, and this actually causes the DNA to form a loop. Additionally, there may be repressor proteins that can actually prohibit transcription. So you can see that there are a lot of different factors or players that um, are needed to work together in order to cause a gene to be transcribed. And so the control at this level involves the ability to have these proteins be made and have them all come together and connect to the proper part of the DNA. Because you have to have the transcription factors and the transcription activator and the mediator proteins all working together in order to allow transcription to proceed. The repressor proteins, remember, they act as kind of a stop in order to slow down or stop transcription of the gene. It's also important to note that the production of these different proteins, so of these transcription factors, the activator, the mediator proteins, and the repressor proteins may be determined by the expression of additional other genes. Because remember, 
genes provide the information needed in order to make a protein. And whether certain genes are turned on or off could be influenced by environmental factors. So an environmental factor may determine whether an activator or a repressor is being made, which would then control whether the gene is being transcribed or not. The next level of eukaryotic gene regulation that we're talking about is post-transcriptional control. So remember that after mRNA is made, but before it leaves the nucleus, some modifications are made to the mRNA. So remember that the modifications that typically occur are that the introns are removed from the mRNA. And remember that the introns are the non-protein coding regions of the gene. So it's DNA that is not needed in order to make the protein, but it's included in the gene. During this process of removing the introns, it's possible that some exons may also be removed. And depending on which gene is being expressed and what the final protein is that needs to be made, it may be different exons that are removed during different transcription events. If exons are removed, it might change the final protein that is being made when translation occurs next. So by altering which exons are removed and how many are removed, Essentially, one gene could be expressed in a, a different ways, depending on which exons are left in and which ones are removed. So it is possible for a gene to actually make a couple of different variations on a protein based on how the introns and exons are removed. It may be possible that sometimes the introns are also left in. at which point the process is actually going to stop. So if the introns are left in, the mRNA is not going to be translated. And it's important to note that whether the introns are removed or not, and which exons are left in and which ones are removed, could be determined by things like the time of day, or it could be determined by where in the life cycle an organism is. It may also be determined by environmental factors, depending on which proteins need to be made at a particular time. There are actually additional molecules of RNA called small nuclear RNAs. Abbreviated as SNRNA. And these SNRNAs affect how the pre-RNA is being spliced. So the SNRNAs can affect whether these um, events up here are occurring and how they are occurring. And last but not least, during post-transcriptional control, uh, control can also be exerted over how quickly the mRNA leaves the nucleus and goes into the cytoplasm.
The next level of gene regulation in eukaryotes that we are going to talk about is called translational control. And remember that translation is this process in protein synthesis where mRNA comes together with a ribosome and tRNA molecules, and they ultimately form a polypeptide that then is converted into a three-dimensional functional protein. One thing that I have not mentioned in previous videos is that a molecule of mRNA can be translated more than once. So even if transcription only happens, let's say, once a day uh, for a particular gene, whichever mRNA molecules are made during transcription, that doesn't mean that only one protein is going to be made from that mRNA molecule. We can actually have multiple ribosomes uh, translate that mRNA into making that polypeptide. Now, a couple of the post-transcriptional processing that we talked about when we talked about protein synthesis included the addition of a poly-A tail and a five prime cap. I remember that these were nucleotides that were added to the three prime and five prime ends of the mRNA molecule during post-transcriptional processing. So the presence of these kind of additions to the mRNA molecule determine for how long that mRNA is going to be able to stick around and how many times it is able to be translated. So essentially the size of these determines how long mRNA persists and how many times it is translated. And the fifth level of eukaryotic gene regulation is the post-translational control. And this is really referring to what happens with the protein that is made at the end of translation. So proteins are constantly being made and broken down because cells need proteins maybe only for a short period of time. If the proteins were never broken down, then the cells would just get full of proteins, many of which they don't need, and the cell would run out of room. There wouldn't be room for anything else to be inside the cell. So the proteins are constantly being made and broken down. And this process, uh, specifically the being broken down, is really mediated by enzymes called proteases. So a protease is an enzyme. So the ASE tells us that it's an enzyme and more specifically, it's an enzyme that breaks down proteins. And these proteases are located kind of all over the body, but more specifically within the cells, these proteases are located in the lysosomes and these additional structures called proteasomes.
And what happens is that a protein actually gets tagged with another protein called a signaling protein that is recognized by the proteasome, and then the proteasome knows to break down that protein. So to wrap this all up, let's summarize or go back and we kind of remind ourselves of those five levels of eukaryotic gene regulation. The first level was chromatin structure. Followed by transcriptional control. which is actually the most important step of control. Next is post-transcriptional control. Followed by translational control. And finally, post-translational control. And recall that chromatin structure, we're really talking about the availability of DNA for gene expression to occur. During transcriptional control, we're talking about when DNA is being used as a template to make mRNA. During post-transcriptional control, we're talking about mRNA splicing being altered and how quickly mRNA leaves the nucleus. Translational control, we are talking about the RNA being used in order to make a polypeptide. And post-translational control, we're really talking about proteins being degraded after they've been made. Now, some key players that we actually haven't talked about yet are these things called small RNA molecules. And we abbreviate this as sRNA. And two specific types of these small RNA molecules are small interfering RNAs, which we abbreviate as SI RNA and micro RNAs, which we abbreviate as MI RNA. And the roles of these small RNA molecules is that these small interfering RNAs uh, may join with an enzyme to break down mRNA before it can be translated. So this would actually affect the post-transcriptional level of gene regulation in eukaryotes. 
the microRNA molecules can be involved in disabling translation. So they would be involved in the transitional level of control of eukaryotic gene regulation. And interestingly, of the DNA that is transcribed, only 1.5% of that DNA goes into coding for mRNA, which will then code for a protein. So the remaining 98.5% of the transcribed gene goes towards making these small RNA molecules that are involved in the control of gene regulation. So in conclusion, you can see that genetics is much more complicated than just looking at dominant and recessive genes, because in addition to genes being present or absent on a chromosome, or whether those genes are dominant or recessive, we also have these multiple layers of gene regulation, which determines whether those genes will even be expressed.